The M4 Sherman is one of the most widely recognized tanks in history, and for some strange reason, I still have not covered it. So, here goes. When the Germans invaded Poland in 1939, the U.S. were still rocking their World War I light tanks, with little interest in developing new medium vehicles. This, however, changed when France was defeated by the Germans. The U.S. considered France to be a military power at the time, and for them to be defeated meant that the U.S. really should consider upgrading their forces. In the meantime, though, the M3 Elite was designed to fulfill a medium tank role. It was based off of previous light tank designs. And this was just to be some a temporary use while the M4 was still being developed. The M4 would have to have a fully traversable turret, more armor, and be able to use parts from the M3 Lee in order to reduce production costs in time. The M4 was ordered for production in September of 1941. In the beginning, the M4 was not too terrible against the Panzer III's and the Panzer IV's. However, when Germany came up with the Panther and Tiger tanks, the M4's 75mm gun just couldn't go through the enemy armor. This led to the well-known tactic of trying to flank enemy Tigers and Panthers, which, while this was almost an act of suicide, was still more effective in destroying Tigers and Panthers than going at them head-on. Other issues with the M4 included ammunition that exploded too easily, which possibly could blow off the turret in some cases and would burn the crew in the tank, as well as limited visibility, meaning it was difficult to spot anti-tank teams. The issues of this tank going against German armor led to tank crews performing their own modifications in the field to increase their survivability. These modifications could include welding extra steel plates on the hull, adding sandbags, or even putting extra track links on the front of the vehicle. While the M4 did not fare well in the later years in Europe, it was an effective vehicle in the Pacific Theater. The Japanese did not have advanced anti-tank weaponry, weaponry like the Germans, so they had a more difficult time of taking the M4s out. They came up, they had to come up with tricks to take out the M4, such as using mines derived from torpedoes, as their tanks and anti-tank defenses really didn't stand a chance. Various upgrades took place over the years, as we see in variants such as the Sherman Jumbo, the Easy A, and the Firefly. The M4 Sherman was to the U.S. as the T-34 was to Russia, a tank that could be produced in massive numbers at a relatively low cost. While it may not have performed well in combat, the sheer numbers were able to overwhelm whatever the M4 went up against. It is estimated that roughly 50,000 M4 Shermans were produced, seeing combat up through the Korean War with the United States, when it was soon replaced with the improved M46 Patton. Now while the United States quit using it, many other countries around the world continued to use it in their local conflicts. That's about all for the M4 Sherman today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what other tanks you want me to do next. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.